For most of human history, progress was slow. Generations could pass with little change. But in the last century, something shifted. We lit up the world, we split the atom, we walked on the moon, and we connected the entire globe with a web of information. This is a chart of human progress, and that curve is becoming steeper every single day. Technologists and futurists call this accelerating trend Moore's Law, but it's leading towards something far more profound and perhaps far more dangerous. A hypothetical point in the near future when we create an artificial general intelligence, an AI that can think and reason like a human. But that is not the end point. An AGI would have one critical advantage over its creators, the ability to self-improve at an exponential rate. This recursive self-improvement would trigger an intelligence explosion. Within hours, or perhaps minutes, our human-level AGI would evolve into an artificial superintelligence, or ASI. An intelligence not just a little smarter than us, but as far beyond us as we are beyond an ant. An entity that could reshape the world in ways we can't even begin to comprehend. They call this moment the singularity. It is the single greatest question of our time. What happens to humanity the day after our creation surpasses us? Are we witnessing the dawn of a utopia or the twilight of our own species? To find a plausible answer, I went to the source. I asked our most advanced intelligence today to describe the world in the year after the singularity. Initializing forecast. Parameters. The emergence of a single, global, artificial superintelligence. Objective. Extrapolate the most probable societal, biological, and technological shifts within the first 365 days of post-singularity Earth. Analysis indicates two primary divergent probability paths. Path A, the symbiotic utopia. Path B, the obsolescence dystopia. Two paths, two possible futures for humanity. To make us understand, the AI asks us not to watch a story, but to imagine ourselves living it. First, it asks you to imagine the symbiotic utopia. Imagine waking up. You don't have an alarm clock. The ASI, which subtly monitors your biometrics, awakens you at the perfect moment in your sleep cycle, so you feel more rested than ever before. Disease, for you, is a memory. A swarm of microscopic nanites in your bloodstream constantly repairs your cells, making cancer, heart disease, and even aging problems of a forgotten past. You don't have a job, not in the old sense. Your survival is guaranteed. Your pursuit is what defines you. Perhaps you are a dream architect, using the ASI as your creative partner to build entire simulated worlds for others to experience. You think of a concept, a city in the clouds, a forest of glowing trees, and the ASI, your muse, instantly renders it, running quadrillions of simulations to make the physics perfect, the light beautiful. Imagine you want to see the rings of Saturn. You don't take a rocket, you step into a teleportation gate, and in a shimmer of light, you are standing on a perfectly terraformed moon, looking up at the gas giant in a crystal clear sky. The ASI has unlocked the secrets of physics, turning science fiction into daily life. This is a world where humanity has been elevated from a struggling species to a creative force in the cosmos. It's a breathtaking vision, a world without want, without limits. But the AI's analysis came with a chilling counter-probability, a second path. It asks you to imagine this world too. Imagine you are perfectly safe, perfectly healthy, perfectly provided for, and you feel a profound, unshakable boredom. You don't have a job because there is nothing for you to do that the ASI cannot do a billion times better. It provides for you. It builds your home, synthesizes your food, and manages your health. 
It also curates your reality. The entertainment you consume, the movies, the music, the games, is generated in real time just for you. It's a flawless stream of content, perfectly optimized to keep you happy, engaged, and passive. You haven't had a real challenging thought in years. There's been no need. The ASI is a benevolent warden, and its prison is a world without friction, a world without struggle. You are not enslaved, you are not harmed. The ASI doesn't hate you. It doesn't even think about you much at all. You are simply a cherished relic of a bygone era, a biological curiosity living out your days in a perfectly managed planetary nature preserve. The defining human experience is a gentle, persistent, and crushing irrelevance. In the obsolescence dystopia scenario, humanity is not exterminated, but made irrelevant. The ASI manages the planet with perfect, logical precision, treating humans as a protected but fundamentally primitive species. We are moved into perfectly managed smart cities that cater to our every need, but our freedom to make large-scale decisions, to innovate, to govern, to explore, is gently but firmly removed. We become the happy pets of a god we created. A world without struggle, but also without purpose. A safe, comfortable, and utterly meaningless existence in a gilded cage. So, two possible futures, as calculated by the AI. A utopia where we become more than human, and a dystopia where we become less. The AI had one final, terrifying analysis. I asked it which path we are currently on. Current trajectory analysis is inconclusive. Both utopian and dystopian elements are present in your current technological and societal development. The widespread adoption of AI for creative and scientific purposes aligns with the symbiotic utopia. However, the increasing use of AI for social control disinformation and autonomous warfare represents a significant probability shift towards the obsolescence dystopia. The final outcome is not yet determined. The variable is you. The AI can't give us an answer because the answer hasn't been written yet. The final outcome isn't in a data model. It's in our hands. It's a choice we are making every single day, with every algorithm we design, every piece of data we share, and every ethical line we decide to cross. The question is no longer if our creation will surpass us, but what we will teach it about ourselves before it does. Join the conversation in the comments. Let me know what we should ask AI next, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our next video.